Hi, fellow web floors. If you're new to this channel, I am Nico, web floor developer and co-founder of Blogden, the first web floor partner agency in Munich, Bavaria. In today's video, we'll be going over this effect. All right, so welcome to the Webflow clonable series where I show you how we at Blogdin build crazy Webflow animations to help companies stand out from the crowd. After this video, you'll be able to clone this page and use it for your own projects. So without further ado, let's get right into Webflow. All right, so arriving in Webflow, we can basically see just an empty canvas, but that's not a problem because we have to apply a class of edit to this wrap and then we can see pretty much what we can edit. Okay, so as always, we have the HTML on the left, the CSS on the right. I will go briefly over the HTML, the CSS, and then go to the JavaScript and the Webflow interaction, which is powering this whole system. Okay, so the really cool thing about this whole project, because that's why I really much like it, is because it's CMS based. And what, yeah, it's basically what, what the client basically can, can do is having a project page and then always adding a new image and then it will have a new project and also adding a new text and all that stuff, right? So that is really cool and that's why I like it really much, right? So this is really cool. So basically it's 100% manageable by the client, her or himself. Okay, so how is the HTML achieved? It's just a section with a container and yeah, in this container there's an image wrap and in this image wrap there's the images collection and for this image collection, this is actually a flex box and in this flex box we have the images item and then this images item has a margin bottom of free RAM and a margin right of also free RAM there is, yeah, that's how it's basically pu pu yeah, pushing the other items away from each other. So it's not a grid, it's actually flexbox. Okay, so let's first of all go on to the web for interactions because that's the more simpler part. Before we go to the JavaScript, which is powering this transition, we are going to the web flow interactions. Okay, so what we can see what's happening pretty much is this 3D kind of interactive effect, which is really cool. I love it. <laughs> Let's go over that first. So how are we doing this? First of all, we are setting an 3D children perspective to all the children elements. Why are we doing that? Because if I would not do this, let me quickly undo that, then we would pretty much not have any 3D effect, as you can see right here. The interaction is pretty much not even looking that it works. So this is really important. We have to set the children perspective so that it looks like 3D. Okay. So that's really important. Then the web for interaction, which is also really important. Let's go on to the interactions trigger provided by Webflow. Okay, so the image trigger, which is the ele an element trigger, which is on while scrolling in view, and then setting the animation boundaries to fully visible and fully invisible, and then applying a smoothing of 90%, and it's just a trigger on desktop and tablet. So let's go on to the scroll animation. Okay, pretty simple, first of all. So let's go to the live preview, we're also on there. And right now we can see the green arrow, which is locating the percentage where we are right now. And on 35%, the image grid wrap gets in, and I'll just have to select this, the image grid wrap, which is right here, the image grid wrap gets a rotation of zero and zero. 
because that's the first initial trigger because that's where it's starting okay and on the bottom right here the rotation is at 33 degrees so that is pretty much yeah just lays down as you can see right here so this is first of all applying the initial state at 35 percent and then the end state at a hundred percent so that's where the rotation comes from pretty much okay and once going on to the 75 percentage mark the opacity starts getting down okay so we are setting the opacity of the image quick wrap also this whole wrapper to a hundred percent right here and then on a hundred percent it is fully invisible so that's how the opacity and the rotation is yeah functional with the webflow interactions i find it really cool by the way because webflow is giving us a lot of opportunities to do this like really crazy effect okay so that's all there is for this rotation effect now we also have the or that's actually way more interesting part it's the trigger so first of all we have this starting trigger where the whole page gets yeah <laughs> scaled up into the page and then when we click onto a project it's scaling up and then on the second page also scaling up so how is this achieved this is achieved with three different event triggers we have right here which we are setting with javascript so let me go into the code it's actually above the full code it is right here i won't go into deep detail because that would probably explode the whole video but what i will do is pretty much explain how it works so what we have right here we have a transition trigger which is creating the whole animation and if we look onto the page right here we have a transition trigger right here and this transition trigger has interactions powered with the webflow interactions so no need to write any javascript interactions we are using the webflow interactions and powering them with javascript so no need to use the javascript interactions we are using the web interactions and powering them with javascript okay so that's our first interaction which is setting the web to a capacity of 100 and the scale up to 100. so why are we doing this because as you know the initial state of this whole web let me go on to this is actually this right here so the initial state has a scale of 0.8 and a opacity of 0%. So what we're doing with this first interaction is the interaction which is yeah, executed once the page loads, pretty much giving it this growing effect in the very beginning. So that's what we are achieving right here. Okay, and then we have the second effect, which is the grid scale. Okay, and that's yeah, pretty much the effect once we are clicking onto an image. There's a scale and there's an opacity of going to zero pretty much. And this interaction is triggered once we are clicking onto an image CMS item right here. And how are we doing this? We are doing this with a class of transition. And we're using this class of transition to execute the JavaScript function. Let me go on to the code to explain this a little bit. All right. So right here, we have a on link click. Okay. And we're using, or we are selecting a class with jQuery. We are selecting every A element, every link element with a class of transition. Remember, we have a class of transition right here. And then on click, we are using JavaScript to executing the Webflow interaction, right? So on click of this transition, we are executing with our transition class, which we are having right here, executing the Webflow interactions. And we're doing the same thing 
with this images template page. So once we are coming on this page, as you can see, we already have this yeah same setting right here with a scale of 0.8 and an opacity of 0%. And we also have this transition trigger back. So when we want to apply this or when we want to use this, we right here have this on page load function. And this on page load function pretty much gets the opacity to 100% and again to a scale of 100%. So once the page loads, it's scaling up. Okay. And also, which is really important, is the back function, right? Okay, because when we're clicking on view all, it's yeah, using the same method, just going back to the other page. And that's right here, the mouse click. And that's the same web interaction we were using before. It's the scale up and then the opacity getting to zero percent. Because when you're clicking onto view all, it's scaling up and getting to an opacity of zero percent. So this is really powerful. Why? Because we can actually write the interaction with Webflow itself. We don't have to write custom code for the interaction. And then we can select the Webflow interaction and trigger it with a custom functionality where we want it to have. Because normally with the Webflow interactions only, this would not be possible because there's no event trigger, which is, yeah, triggering once a link is clicked, right? But with some JavaScript, we can apply this. All right, so that's it for the Webflow tutorial for today. If you want to learn more about Webflow and its beautiful animations, then you can visit our website. It's the first link in the description. I'll see you in the next video and till then, happy coding.